Hey, I wanted to do a video I saw this morning that silver prices were up in the physical market on eBay. Um, pretty significant, man. And, and yes, it could. Um, and I don't think that this is anywhere near the end. I'm not leaving the charge. I'm not running away. I'm not anything at all. I'm just riding the wave. I'm just gonna ride the wave. To me, it feels more legitimate than anything. And I just trust what I feel. It's uh Oh no! Hey Mickey, is this a silver coin? But as an investment goes, as like a monetary tool goes, like this is a fancy kind of I don't know, gift type. One of, my, one of my favorites. Another cheesy one. I love this. This is one of my favorite coins. It's a monkey. It's a 3D monkey. It's so cool. But when you hold stuff like this in your hand, you're like, oh, that's money. Oh, I get it now. And I don't know. It feels legit. It doesn't feel like a piece of paper feels. We are like, when you're working for a piece of paper, you're working for the joy of working, right? And then you get paper to pay your bills or whatever digital, and you get to pay your bills and get food. But you get to work for the joy of working, for the most part. You're not working for the money. You have to get the money to, to pay your bills. Um, but this, I mean, these things are just, they're beautiful. Um, so I get the physical market as a monetary tool. I don't get anything else. It doesn't seem legitimate. But the, um, legitimacy or illegitimacy of any, of any currency is really, you know, up to the people to decide. I just know what I feel. So I felt that for quite some time, which is why, I, you know, I got this for like, I think 35 bucks. It wasn't terribly expensive and it came in this cool little box. It's not a full ounce. I don't know. I think it's like 0.7 ounces or something like 0.67. Um, so it's not a huge investment but in looking at today's market I would break even just on what the silver is going for probably um this is just a really cool coin so it's probably I think it's cool but I think that it's it makes sense if I wasn't on my tool thing right now I would probably be buying some silver coins and I'm not saying that you'll go to the store and get a gallon of milk with a silver dollar or anything like that. But honestly, if I was at your house and you were like, because I'm in people's houses all the time. If I was at your house and you were like, you know, I need this fixed, this and that, but I can't afford to pay you right now. But I have this. Would you take it? I would take it at... I mean, honestly, depending on how bad I felt for you, I might give you a better deal than you would get on eBay. Honestly. Um, otherwise, I would probably give you fair market value for silver. Like, in trade, of, in trade for labor, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> like that goes without saying, honestly. Gold even more so. Um, and then there's the, so I think most tradesmen probably would. Like, you grocer, no, he probably would, and he's, you know, probably needs smaller um, 
more liquids, whatever the, you know, the police are taking, basically. <laughs> um, but I think tradesmen, uh, for large part, would take it. And uh, I think that all the pawn shops, you know, will always give you at least spot price, whatever that is. Um, eBay is a great resource for liquidating at 10% loss. Um, I don't think that this is a time to sell anything. I think that this is just people waking up to the fact that the currency is, is being rapidly devalued. And like I said, if I wasn't in a position where tools and bankruptcy weren't uh, the primary issue, I would be moving, you know, my paper money into into the metals um, as quickly as I could. Right now, I'm scrapping copper. That's I can't I can't do any better than that. I'm picking up, you know, not much because the other guys always want to, but. Um, that's all I can do right now, is just pick up little pieces of copper and throw them in a scrapbook that I got going. But, you know, that's, that's the, um, that's a smart play right now. You know, some people say the only way you'll make money in metal is by scrapping. I don't think that's going to be true anymore, because I think it is money. You know, I think the only way you'll have money um, is if, if it is metal and the longer the metal lasts and the more useful the metal is the the more it'll be worth I do think that this this spike is not going to be limited to um, silver and monetary I think that there's some technology revolutions taking place that are going to require um, large amounts of metal and uh and all different types of weird metals too, like not certainly not just silver. Um, you know, but I, I think that's the place to be. I think everything else right now doesn't seem. I mean, I know not. I don't want to be like I would invest right now in, in my boss's company. I am by buying tools. That's exactly what I'm doing. Um, the the truth is there are lots of things to invest in but as far as like any sort of financial instrument if it's not made out of physical metal it's you know potential dust in the wind as far as I'm concerned so I felt that way for a while, and I was starting to see the, the prices rise. And again, I'm not leading the charge, and I'm not uh, running away from it. I'm just, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, this looks like reality to me. I'm going to ride this wave as long as I can. And if I have to sell a little bit of, or maybe I'll sell a little bit of copper. Although I think copper is going to go up more and faster than even silver. Honestly, I think when copper spikes, it's going to be like a 5, 6 Xer. <laughs> It'll be like 35 bucks a freaking pound. Um, I would be surprised. Um, yeah, that's, that's certainly possible. And then, you know, that's, that's really going to be the way to, to secure any sort of long-term value of, of money. In, in a turbulent world like this, if you want to do business and really make things, you need raw materials. And these raw materials, the good ones, are made out of metal. The shitty ones are made out of plastic. We can, and, and there are other options now. And 3D printing is a huge technological boom um, to the manufacturing industry. But at the end of the day, it doesn't eliminate the need for metal uh, as a as a material. Um, and basically, we got you know the frame material. Um, then you have the component material, uh, and 
It's, it's basically gold, metal, silver, platinum, copper, aluminum, and plastics. And that's, like, if you want to build stuff, that's what you need. And then, if you look at how to monetize those assets, and what, what makes sense, and what's used the most, and what's just basically required, copper and silver really do shine. Like, it's just a, a, a looking at the valuation. Um, the only way I, I see it is being like a terrible investment is if it's like a Mad Max scenario <laughs> where the only thing that requ that's required is the use of force in that, in that hillscape. Um, money is uh, of no value, even metal is of no value, unless it's a bullet. Um, but hopefully the world does not descend lots to such steps. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be sweet. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm banking on, and I see the prices going up, and hopefully other people are waking up to just the reality of where, where all these animals running around this rock hurtling through space, and we need to deal with each other in a civilized manner. And we're not going to do it by talking over each other. We're not going to do it by punching each other in the face until the other one stops moving. Um, ideally, it's going to be uh, through the uh, fair exchange. Uh, and that's going to include fair rules. Yeah. So... Metal is a great, a great vehicle to get us to that place, and hopefully, we all ride that wave together. I certainly s starting to feel the groundswell, starting to. Just looking at the numbers. Later, guys.